Hey guys, welcome back. Let's play Final Fantasy X-2. That's not the same music we normally get when we get on the airship. Last time, we decided to steal what was stolen from us. We beat them up in their own home, and now we're on the same team. <laughs> I got nothing. First things first, we are going to Bevel. Full speed ahead. Who put you in charge? You just wait, Blondie. You know, what next? She's off to say Xpira, of course. Right. It is a JRPG. <sighs> yuri, yuri. Always getting herself dragged into trouble. Yep. We're going to Pavel. There should be lots of spears there. So why don't we hunt for them on the side? Uh-huh. Trying to convince them. Just admit it, love. You're a goody goody. Ah! Oh. Well, she's not wrong. Okay. We are now locked into going to Bavel. This is why I made the addendum part to the video, well, the previous episode. So how are we going to do this? Um... It's obvious we nab the head honcho. Then we make him lead us to Vegnagun and checkmate. Not bad. I got no problem with this. Our target is the new Yevon Prater, Barrelai. A girly man like that doesn't stand a chance without his escort. <laughs> oh my god, I can't stop Careful. laughing at that line. He's much stronger than he looks. Oh, that's ridiculous. <laughs> Company. Who goes hey, there? guards! <laughs> it's those youth league spies. We won't have you defile this place like you did in Kilika. Okay, that's fine. Well, we can well, take you guys good down. Good luck! And they're on our good team, luck. and they're as useless as Team Rocket. Hi there. Doesn't Team Rocket join Ash at one point? I really don't remember. It's been years since I watched the uh, anime, but uh, yeah. Well, there's that. Yay for not strong enemies. Eh. Okay, mission time! We are now locked into going to Vell, and even before that, we couldn't do anything from the menu there. We were basically had to as soon as we left. Our, as soon as we go into Guado Salam and start the mission there, you can't do anything else. That is why when I was doing the editing last night, I was like, oh crap, I forgot to set up for the next boss, which means I needed to buy some things. Let's take a look at what I bought. I uh, I didn't have my mic hooked up at the time, so I figured I'd just toss the, uh, the information in there. Where exactly? Kinesis badges. If you're low on money, because these cost 10 grand a pop, you can make it buy with only buying two. I bought three just because I'm loaded in money. Uh, angel earrings are not required, um, but they are a good idea to grab as well. They only cost 5,000. Both are available at the Guadal Salam shop, so you can do that if you sneak kind of around the corner, even once it's a hot spot. So just be aware that uh, you want to do that before initiating the cutscene that goes into Guadal or into uh, Chateau Leblanc. So, anyway, so we've done that. Uh, Pick those up. The other thing I found out while well, I had to redo pretty much the entire episode last time was that the Charm Banjo is not a guaranteed drop. I would guess that some of the other things are not guaranteed drops as well. Uh, this was specifically from the battle against all three of Team Rocket, where one of the henchman guys dropped it. I can't remember which one off the top of my head. But uh, yeah, I tried to do it once and I didn't get the Charm Banjo, so I had to reload and do the whole battle and the cutscene prior again. Okay, enough of this. Uh, was there anything else I wanted to go over real quick? No, I think that's everything. Uh, we're going to fight a number of these guys, I think. Oh, we can't pass, huh? I'm on a roll. You shall not pass? Yeah, pretty much, except for, well, it's a lot more epic watching Gandalf face down a Balrog than it is to nice work. watch three girly girls shoot very weak guards with guns. Doesn't have the same epic feel. Sorry. 
And this one, again, will be forced. If you talk to that kid, I think he throws you into a battle as well. Uh, he would have done this when we came here earlier, uh, before it was a hot spot. But I think you could walk by, walk by these guys. Uh, you, didn't, you weren't forced to fight them. But if you talk to them, I think then you had to fight them, maybe? I don't remember. It doesn't really matter. Just don't talk to the kid because it'll do more fights and we don't really need more fights. But yeah, the uh, after recording last episode, I decided I wanted to uh, go and check and look around for, uh, for boss strategy because I remember the upcoming boss was a bit of a pain in the ass. You can, I believe you can talk to most of the people around here without any problems. No information, only ordered, okay. Hello, what do you have to say? No one seems to know what's going on. Sounds about right. Okay, you don't have to go over here first, but I want to show something, just because it'll make things make more sense. If you come over here first, there is a weird doodad on the wall, and that's about it. Now, I know that doesn't make any sense right now, and I don't know how it would make sense kind of later on, unless I already knew, but uh, just trust me for like five seconds. Go up here. If it's got the thing that matches, it does the thing, things do things, and we can now uh, go over there and activate something. Now, the reason why we want to do this is because the way forward is actually dead center. However, we can't take that to go where we're supposed to go. And the Praetor apparently is gone. Hmm, what do you have to say? Work themselves into a frenzy. But yeah, this, if you remember from chapter one, it only takes us up into an, an area where we could talk to Barely. Uh, in, fact, in fact, let's go up there and see what we can do with it. I don't believe there's anything we can do up here. We can actually go in here. No, we cannot go in. We can do absolutely nothing here. Well, that was productive. But uh, yeah, so you can do that if you or you can go up there only like that. I'm sure talking to someone around here, um, you know, would tell you what you're supposed to do at this point. But eventually, I guess you figure it out since it's there's a limited amount of things you can actually do here. And here, I believe it's always the bottom one. I'm I'm not sure how this works. I think the bottom one makes it go down and the other one would make it go up. I, I don't remember. Pretty much it stays down, except for I think like one item in a later chapter that you can get and that's it. But uh, basically what that does- Jeez, things really are a mess, huh? Is it changes where this goes. Yeah. That was quick delivery. That was a very strange point to put two lines of dialogue. Well, a line and a word. <laughs> oh, what hell is this? Actually, not so bad this time. Surprisingly Wait, enough. What are fiends doing in the temple? Probably the same thing the that Machina of secrets. was doing last Don't time. Don't let a couple of fiends throw you. Yeah, last time, Final Fantasy X, there were Machina in the temple, and that didn't make sense then. But yeah, you can just walk over all this stuff now. There's a number of forced encounters. I'll throw the uh, monster list up on screen here for you, but uh, it's kind of more the same. This is a little bit of an upgrade. Uh, also, from what I heard, kill it, kill it, kill it, kill it. No, that's poison. I hate you. Nice work. You suck. Okay, so, okay, now it gives you the nice view, so you can kind of see where you're going. We want to go right first, after healing unfortunate status effects. Um, as you're coming through here, abilities that you want to have kind of worked on and continue to work on. It would be nice if you got Mega Potion. If you did not get Mega Potion, don't worry about it, not a big deal. Items level two, that takes priority, and so does Chemist. Those two, pretty, pretty good idea to make sure you get those. And then, let's see, what else do we want? 
Uh, at a different point, we will probably want Ice Eater, Water Eater, Gravity Eater, Fire Eater, and Lightning Eater, and I think I said those backwards, but doesn't matter! Those are going to be useful as well. Um, let's see, anything else? You, you'll want Steel around here, and I think that's it. Oh, uh, Gun Mage is going to be really, really good down here. Uh, there's a number of enemies, yeah, to Machina. Uh, the Dismantler ability and the Mech Destroyer, because there's there's a difference between Machina and Mechs. Mechs are like the uh, the big haymaker guy that we fought uh, when we got the Awesome Seer at the end of Chapter 1 in Kilika. Um, and Machina are basically ones that you could steal from to kill instantly in Final Fantasy X. You cannot do that in this game, unfortunately. I think I've neglected to mention that up until now, but we really haven't fought that many Machina. But yeah, you can walk over the entirety of this now. It's not anywhere as annoying as it was uh, last time. See ya. <laughs> yeah, if you if you're playing the original Final Fantasy X 2 and you don't have access to the Psychic, um, you end up getting something a little late, but uh, that would also be able to kind of be useful. Um, I don't think we have access to anything. Oh, can't go over there. Uh, to anything else right now as far as elemental absorption, but the elemental absorption will uh, end up being useful in a couple of uh, encounters. Yeah, most of these things just unlock automatically. Leave it to me. Anyway, let's finish off the uh, small fry around here. <laughs> really, the poison. Ah, pit it. Well, at least you get the same person. Oh, yeah. Poison's right. annoying. Uh, by the way, the reason why I've leveled up uh, so many abilities in such a short amount of time is due to the garment grid. Basically, when I had to go and redo pretty much the last episode, anytime I ran into a battle, I just swapped through all of them so that when I would, and then switched back to the alchemist job class. So I did the full loop, got triple AP for killing all of the enemies. And when you fight the enemies in, uh, in LeBlanc's uh, mansion, they're usually come in groups of three or four. So three times three is nine, three times four is 12. That's a lot of AP per fight. So there's that. Plus, of course, I always do that in the uh, boss fights when I had to rematch all the boss fights. Well, there's another one. For the most part, uh, like, oh, I think I was starting to say something a little while ago, but I heard that uh, the enemies around here can use uh, pointless, uh, the status effect, or, yeah, pointless. Oh, I forgot to heal poison. Oops. Uh, and if that's true, I haven't really looked it up. I just remember glancing that over in a guide somewhere. Um, if that's true, then having the garment grid that I have on right now will also protect you against that, so we don't have to worry. If uh, not, oops, no. Yeah, so equipped experience zero proof is pointless proof. I'm not sure why they abbreviated it this way. It is actually more confusing. It makes you think that you don't get any experience, but that is not how that garment grid works. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so uh, if not, you'll basically just go into the menu after every fight to make sure you're not inflicted with it, because it's hard to tell um, based on the animations of the characters what if you're inflicted with that status effect or not. So. Anyway, all that preamble aside, we've pretty much got ourselves set up to go, and this is the last little bit that we can do in this chapter. That's why we're kind of locked in place at this point. Um, the path here is always the same. The chests are always the same. The monster spawns are always the same. I don't think there's any random encounters in here, but there are a number of spots where you're forced into this battles is a lucky day. against a few different enemies, and I want to... Target you first, so you do not poison me. You're gonna poison me, aren't you? Yay, no poison. There are more enemies around here, as you can see from the list when I put it up, than uh, the ones that we are currently fighting. Uh, there are multiple areas that we can go through around here, and uh, each one of them has its own kind of encounter set, and I'm not even sure if it's really an encounter set, but you fight different enemies at different uh, parts of the area. 
I wonder if I'm going to get into a fight. Can I avoid it? No, I cannot avoid it. But trying to avoid it got me a preemptive strike. And somebody oversold. Okay, that's fine. You have slow attack. That's fine. I really don't care if you use slow, to be quite honest. How much HP do you have now? You have a lot more HP. Wow. Hey, stop that. I look over at my guy and I die. Bang. Bang. Bang, bang. So what, he hit, what he hit me with? Does he have an instant death attack or something? He's not doing that much damage. I looked away and that's when I died. We have five remedies for that fight. Uh, when enemies oversoul, you tend to get quite a bit of... Uh, I'm maxed out on those anyway. I'll just use those. Uh, you tend to get a, a decent amount of items from the oversold enemies. Uh, the, especially, like, the amount will increase. Like, if you fight an Ochu that's oversold, you get more remedies than normal. Normally, I think you get, like, one or something like that. And there's nothing over there. Uh, like, one or two remedies from them. But if they oversold, you get a lot more. Okay, I believe I'm still good. Uh, this guy showed up before. It's Barkeep. You can use the shop if you need to. Um, sleep protection won't help us. Silence won't. Darkness won't. Poison, yes, but it's only poison. It's not that important in this game. So uh, over here, we should get chocobo feathers. I don't know why I remember that chest. All right. Another save. This is why I have so many saves, because if I didn't, I would have screwed myself out of the strategy that I want to demonstrate for the upcoming, well, one of the upcoming boss fights. There are more than one of them, or there is more than one of them. However, that makes more sense. Well, that's interesting. Let's go. There's a breeze down here. I don't know. The way Pain and Riku jumped, it looked like they would land poorly. The way Yuna jumped, it's like it's just a little up and down. That makes sense. The other two, Riku looked like she'd do a belly flop. Hey, look. I, I quote unquote reinforcements. Eh, not so much. What is this place? I'm not sure. This is ridiculous. Make, every time I hear, you know, it's like, here's the setup, and but this is ridiculous. I always go back to the old uh, Treehouse of Horrors episode from The Simpsons. I've heard of a wailing wall before, but this is ridiculous. And then, of course, everybody groans because it's another crusty joke, but... <laughs> I've heard of a wailing wall, but this is ridiculous! Oh, oh, yeah. So sick of the juke! Anyway, always reminded of that. Commodious? I don't know what that means. Is there anything over here? What's this? Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Tutorial. That's a tutorial for later. That's fine. Ignore it. We have walkthroughs. And I guess technically this is a walkthrough that is sourced from other walkthroughs. Because trying to memorize this? Yeah, no. Even when I do it, I get confused. Actually, in my test run, I screwed up and I started doing things before checking the walkthrough. And it meant that this process ended up taking like an hour longer than necessary. And I gained a whole lot of levels. I don't take orders. Okay, go fight the uh, Max. I'll make an exception this time. Leave it to us, love. Thought so. Yeah, we did not expect you to uh, do anything else. 
All right. Use the chain over there if you want to cross to the center. Are you blind? Well, at least they give you, like, a nice idea instead of just saying, oh, use it over there, and then she doesn't even, like, look in a direction or something like that. I've had games do that to me. It's like, where the hell am I supposed to go? Nice, easy job, huh? What's wrong with the picture of jumping off a balcony? I don't know. I think they wanted to recreate something from the last game. But they didn't do it in FMV, so it's nowhere near as cool. But there's that. Okay, so we got these guys to deal with. And some other weird lights and stuff. Okay. These guys have a decent amount of HP. Which models are you? The 13s? 13s, 13s have 1380 HP and one fell down. Okay, this would be the point in time where we'll want to make some adjustments to our setup, and I'm also going to double check the uh, directions for doing this extremely irritating little puzzle. One moment. Okay, we're back, and I have made some changes. Everybody is now a psychic. You're probably going to want that. Look at that list of auto abilities. Excellent. We have protection from most of the things we need, but surprisingly not all. Okay, Kinesis Badge uh, guards against slow and stop. Slow is the one we want protection of here. It's not required, but it's nice and it will speed up battles. Instant Death Protection is going to be useful at the start of one of the upcoming battles, but not all of them. Uh, a number of the enemies, uh, or the bosses, we're going to fight a number of bosses upcoming. Um, one of them can use a lot of elements, uh, and that's their primary source of attack. The other one can also use elements, including gravity, uh, but that's not their only method of attack. Either way, having protection against elements is a really, really good idea around. Uh, there are garment grids to protect you against Itchy, which is another status effect that uh, I think at least one of the bosses can do. Okay, so we're on a circular platform right now. Starting with the one that we started at right here, this is Tower 1. Above me, going counterclockwise, is Tower 2, Tower 3, Tower 4, Tower 5, and Tower 6 will be just to my left. This is somewhat confusing, but the way we do this is... They have blue lights on these ones. We want to go and approach these and activate them. Now we have to do this in a precise order, otherwise it doesn't work properly and we miss out on an item. Well, you can do it again later, but it's really complicated on how to do this again later. You will fight a number of these guys. They use Haymaker. These guys have a decent amount of HP. Um, one thing that we are going to want to do around here is switch up and steal from them. Uh, this one is the zero variety. Um, if they... we uh, waiting for you to use your... Nope, no, that's not what I wanted to do. You go up there. If you're using Blast Punch. I'm not super worried about that. Uh, you go up there. Do not kill her, thank you. Um, we can pull a Mega Potion out of our ass at this point, and that would be helpful. The other two I'm going to switch back here. Um, I, I don't think he's susceptible to that, but... Uh, yeah, he's not susceptible to that. He's not really susceptible to much of anything, actually. So, don't kill her. Thank you. There's your Mega Potion. Okay. Hurry up and change your job class so I can start attacking. There we go. Uh, so yeah, like 2500 HP somewhere in there and around. It's not the uh, most damaging enemy in the world, or not the most dangerous, but he does do quite a bit of damage. Uh, drops a wristband as a normal drop. If you happen to get one to Oversoul, you can steal Diamond Gloves instead of Mithril Gloves. And I can't remember what he drops off the top of my head. I think I had it a moment ago. One sec, one sec. Hyper Wrist. And that's just more power than the wristband. So it would be somewhat useful to do that. 
So anyway, as you can see now, that's why I was mentioning all of the uh, different towers. Okay, so we were at one. This is tower two. Skip tower two, move on to tower three. Tower three, we also want to do. Before doing that, I am mostly healed up, good to go. There should be another one of the, uh, the monsters from before, though there is a variant of, uh, of the mech here. Since he was a repeat, I just decided to do him off screen. Uh, when we do find the variant, I will show him on screen. They, they're almost as powerful as bosses, but they're not entirely like that. So that was three. This is four. We want to skip that one, and we want to go to five, which should be this one. This time, something different happens, and I should have checked to make sure I was healed, but oh well. Yeah! You remember this guy from Final Fantasy X, don't you? He's nowhere near as annoying, but he has a lot of tricks up his sleeve. All right, so this guy is called Precepts Guard. First things first, I don't really care about the item we could steal from this guy, but I'm going to steal anyway. I believe it is only a mana tablet, which isn't the biggest thing in the world. And yeah, so you want to guard against that. He can also do instant death, which he likes to start off the battles by doing. There's my mana tablet. Go. Don't tell me you get locked in a in a set where that's all you do. So yeah, we want to keep everybody in uh, this mode because this mode is ideal. You can cast Drain and Osmos and Demi, which we're protected against. You can cast level one elemental spells, which we were also protected against. He has 36 80 HP, 78 64 if he oversouls. He is immune to gravity. He is weak to holy, though we can't exploit that. Um, if he does oversoul, uh, the item you can steal from him will be a recovery bracer, which gives you auto regen. It's not bad. I'm not a big fan of regen in this game, um, but I just figured I'd at least note that for you. Um, one of his attacks can inflict um, the itchy status effect, which that's our normal drop from him, is a regen ba bangle. Uh, I don't think there is a rare one. But uh, yeah, so he can inflict itchy, which prevents you from switching job classes, which can be annoying, so use remedies to fix that. I think you can also use holy water, maybe? I can't remember. Uh, let's see, yeah, the Oversoul version uses an ability called Magic Catalyst, and it continues to boost his magic stat higher and higher the longer the battle goes. So I guess that could be like an additional reason to use the uh, uh, the psychics in that fight. All right, so we've just dis uh, disabled the uh, security system and now we can head on down. But that's not exactly what we want to do. One moment. Okay, now that we've done the basic part, this is what we need in order to continue on with the game. We don't have to do the rest of it, but it nets us something quite nice, and I would like to go for it. So, we've just activated the fifth one, which is where we should be at here. Uh, if you ever kind of get lost or turned around, the top plate, assuming you haven't screwed anything up, should be over top of T1, or the uh, top, or the, the first one. It also has a chain attached to it, though that's not the only one with a chain attached to it, just so you know. So we're gonna go and center ourselves back at T1. So we're at T1. Where do we wanna go next? Well, we actually wanna go back this way to T6. Now this one is not lit up. So if we come up this one, these ones will glow red. Now, I'm not sure how you're supposed to figure this out without a walkthrough, but uh, this is going to spawn us, I think, another mech. Oh, you're the other variant. Okay, that's fine. Or 99. No, yeah, that is the other one. 
I believe this guy has the same items to uh, steal, so we're just going to uh, do that real quick. Okay, I said real quick. Come on. Mithril gloves again. That's fine. Uh, you don't have to steal these items. I'm basically going above and beyond to make sure I have things that I need. So, you can do that. Get somebody on healing detail, just because this guy does a decent amount of damage. Thought somebody was still on Thief. Mega Potion! Nope. There. There. Get everybody all in, on board with the same uh, dress sphere here. Uh, this guy's got about the same amount of HP. Uh, his drops, I believe, are also the same, unless he, unless I'm remembering wrong, and he drops a power wrist. Since I can play this game without looking at the screen, we will look this up. As long as I use the correct people. And, of course, I say that, and then things happen. Um, are you dead yet? There we go. <laughs> and stamina tablets. Is that what you're supposed to drop? That is what you're supposed to drop. Okay, that's fine. Um, if he oversoles, he drops power gloves. Or no, sorry. If he oversoles, he drops diamond gloves again. Um, if he oversoles, you can steal power gloves from. So I had things mixed up or something. What this does is activating the sixth one here will reveal a new uh, plate. But the thing is, once you've activated one of the odd ones out, or I guess technically they're the even ones, two, four, and six, what that does is it means that the other ones, one, three, or yeah, one, three, and five, will move the uh, move those plates around depending on which one's activated. So the red one here is activated. This is number six. So what we need to do now is we need to go back to Tower 1, which is right here, and we need to fight the uh, Precepts Guard boss four more times and just go in there and do it four more times. Okay, you're fully healed. There we go. I'm not going to show the battles, but I will show the animation that uh, comes out of afterward. I'm not going to change through all the uh, thieves and steal from this guy over and over again. I uh, do note, though, that uh, we are protected against Demi, the main reason why I have the job classes for this particular boss. But uh, kind of the other kind of protection thing that we are going to want, I thought he was almost dead there, is, um, like I said, he can use instant death. He can use bio as well. We're not worried about that as much. But uh, if he does oversoul, and since we're fighting him over and over again, he might, then you're going to want to kind of be protected against his elemental attacks, which he can do. I guess we'll show that one because it was quick, but uh, the other ones I will do off screen. I like the Psychic Job class. It looks cool. The actions are cool. And see, what this has done is that fourth plate that was down there, this is going to move it around. And using the first tower here, moves it in the direction we want to move it. So anyway, let's do this uh, a few more times here. And so we defeated another one there that will turn the plate a little bit more. So that's two down. Two more to go. Guess I should probably heal that. Well, I guess I'll show that little clip there because he actually used death. Just to show you that I guess that he can do it. 
since he wasn't uh, behaving before. A lot of the guys seem to think that he does it on his first turn, but he never seems to for me. In fact, it's somewhat rare that he does use it against me, or at least it is this time. I don't remember how often he used it in my test run. But... Got another regen mangle. So this is the third one. And with that one out of the way, we can do one final time. The fourth time. Okay. So we finished off him for the fourth time there, which puts that in a better position. Cool. Now we have that one. Now we are still at Tower 1. We haven't moved from Tower 1. Now we want to go over here to Tower 2. Activate this one, which I believe just puts us in a battle against another one of the mechs. And we finished off another one of the uh, 99 varieties, the, uh, the brown ones there. And that launched another one. Guess where we're going next? Back to Tower 1. Let's fight this guy two more times. Okay, and yes, I'm not kidding. We gotta fight this guy two more times. Again, like I said, don't ask me how anyone figured this out, you know, without just fumbling around with it for hours, because every time you move the thing, you have to, you know, run around to the other one and kill more enemies. And it's not like a simple puzzle where you just finish it off in, you know, five or ten minutes. This takes forever. Okay, he oversold. We'll show this battle off. Not that he's going to do much, but uh, Magic Catalyst, as I said, will raise his uh, magic uh, stat over the course of the battle. The longer the battle goes, the higher his magic stat. The thing is, it doesn't really matter because, yeah, I'm immune to magic, so there's that. But his normal attack gets to be a little more powerful, I believe, as well as when he oversouls, all his stats go up. Ow. But as long as he keeps casting spells on me, I'll be fine. The, uh, the most important one for this fight is really Gravity Eater, uh, which is really nice to have. The thing is, the Garment Grid that contains Gravity Eater is gotten later down in this dungeon. Kind of a dick move, considering this guy uses it, and our next boss will also use it. And you fight that boss before you get access to the Garment Grid as well. Uh, as far as the rest of the fight, uh, don't worry too much about it. The only reason I went into specific detail on the Oversoul option is just because you're fighting this guy six times, it's a lot more likely that you're going to get it as opposed to just fighting the boss once. Get three mana tonics from you. Is that what you're supposed to drop? Yes, it is, instead of a regen mangle. Okay, that's fine. Okay, that should be not the last one. The last one we need is the fourth one. So that's our second attempt on that. I believe, anyway. Okay, so this is two. And this should be three. So the final one that we haven't done yet should be four. This is one way that you can kind of double check. So you see we have the platform at the very bottom to that door, and we're just missing one uh, that should come out just from going to this one. This one, however, leads us to, well, not the precepts guard. This guy is different. You can fight this guy over and over again like you did with the, uh, the precepts guard, but you have no real reason to. 4,420 HP, 6,641 if he oversouls. This guy casts level three elemental spells on us and has a punch attack. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's what he does. I can take a nap and I'll be just fine in this fight. You can steal a water gem from him, whoop-de-f-can-do. 
Uh, if he does Oversoul, you can steal the Short Circuit accessory, which is actually not bad. I think it's Lightning and Waterproof? Or no, Lightning and Water Eater? It's got two Eater abilities on it. Not really the best, considering what we already have. I guess I should probably fight this guy. Yeah, we'll fight this guy, sure. But uh, yeah, um, if he Oversouls, he does have a Power Catalyst ability that boosts his strength the longer the battle goes. Uh, which will apply to his normal attack, which he's not using right now. But, uh, yeah, there's that. That's the only real thing that changes. He's immune to gravity. He's weak to holy. Again, we don't have access to holy, so there's nothing we can do about that. If I really cared, I would uh, change job classes to get the triple AP from this fight, but, eh. I don't really need to level up the psychics any more than I already have. Uh, the ability that I have been working on is uh, called Magic Guard, which nullifies magic damage against the target, which is a decent ability. I didn't use it in my test run, though I found some, like, just basically thinking around, I found some situations that it might come in handy in, so I think we'll learn it just for something to learn. Uh, you get an l ring for defeating him. Uh, in normal mode, if he oversouls, you get three or four water gems. Again, woo! Now I'm thinking future on. Woo! Now, if I've done everything correctly, then we can go back to one, tower one over here, and we should have access to every part of the area. Assuming I didn't do anything wrong. Uh, you don't have to, uh... Hold the button. That does not look like it's in the right spot. That is not in the right spot. I gotta move that one. Um, you know what? I'm probably just didn't look down far enough in the guide. I'm guessing that's what it is. I'm probably supposed to go and do uh, something else real quick. So we're centered at T1. Give me a sec. Okay, it was exactly what I thought it was. Okay, now. Uh, I just missed this because a boss kind of interrupted the flow of the text and they decided to put the final uh, clue below the boss fight, which, fair enough. Okay, so we're back at Tower 1. You can either go here, fight uh, the Precepts Guard three times, or you go to the third one, which isn't the one in red that we see there. It's the... Am I on the right one? Yeah. Because that... Sh yeah, that should be one, because that's where you go down by so yeah, you either go to one, but four is active. That doesn't make sense. One second here. I'm confusing myself. I am definitely confusing myself. Okay, so they're all active. That's why. Okay, so I was thinking the, the red ones would, only one of them would be active at a time. That is not the case, I guess. So anyway, this should be still one. So like I said, you go here, you kill the precepts guard three times. Or you'll go to T2 and then up to T3 and then you can kill Geo, what's, what's his pickle that we just killed. You can kill him three times. Your choice. Um, I'm going to go kill Geo guy because I don't know why, but I'm going to go kill Geo guy because I already killed the other guy six, seven times. So yeah, go up here. This should be tower three and let's kill this guy a few more times. Okay, we took down him one more time, which will move this around. As you can see, we're trying to move it into the hole that I ran into the last time we went down there. And after healing up, we'll go and fight him two more times. Okay, and that is the next attempt at that guy. So we've moved it one more space. Should only be one more left. Okay, we finish him off, which should be for the final time. And no, he did not oversoul on me, so we don't get to uh, take a look at that, unfortunately. Oh well, no biggie. So that should have activated the last of things. So now we can backtrack to T2 and back to the first tower. You don't even have to hold circle to uh, jump down these, which is kind of weird since you almost always have to for everything else. But anyway, for doing all of that extra work and fighting all of those powerful enemies multiple times, we get nothing. What do you mean nothing? No, it's just hard to say. 
here, we get the almighty ribbon accessory. This one, uh, this chest, by the way, does not respawn in subsequent chapters. Um, it doesn't respawn with different items or anything like that. Every time I've ever come back down here to look at it, it's always been empty. But uh, luckily, we do not have to screw with the stupid plates again next time. I don't think we ever really... We might have to do with this once. I don't think I want to go in there yet. Uh, but I do want to save since we've done most of the things that well you know what scrub it we're at, at uh, t1 here so that's where we came from we'll keep going on this episode i was going to uh cut it off and turn the air conditioner back on because it's hot and satan in here but uh, no we will uh, show off all of the different treasures you can get around the side so that we can actually move on and go down below because i don't think they block you off but they might here we get 500 Gil. And yeah, this guy is here. And we can't do anything. It just kind of died there, and that's where it stays. So there's that, I guess. I'm going to turn on fast. For oh, it killed all the ambience. Well, that's no good. We can't have that. Go up this one. Yeah, we'll leave the ambience on. It just gets unsettling when it's silent. This one's alive. You have no choice but to fight this one if you want to get the treasure. He's no different than any of the other ones. Um, I have been stealing from all of these guys that I've encountered, uh, mainly just because the items are accessories. And accessories are always good, especially if you want to... Uh, you steal it? Yeah. Especially if you want to do more creature, creature creator stuff later. Throw up a Mega Potion there. Ow. Come on, there we go. There we go. Get everybody uh, transformed there. Finish them off with the Psychics. Uh, after learning Magic Guard, I'm working on uh, Fizz Guard, I think it's called which is basically the same as Magic Guard, except for it applies to physical attacks, it will block them out. It also, based on what I've looked into, might be useful. I'm not sure if it will be or not, but I will at least learn it if I'm going to use them anyway. A uh, glass buckle, did we already have that? I just, I love seeing that item, because I really enjoyed that item in uh, Final Fantasy IX, and you don't see it in a lot of other Final Fantasies, for some reason or another. Okay. Word. I must have already had one. Unless I gone past it. I think I went past it. And, oh, there it is. Glass buckle. I already had one of those. Okay, never mind. Yeah, very long episode today. I But I didn't want to uh, split up trying to get the ribbon because I know from experience when people are confused about doing the whole ribbon thing it can be a real pain in the ass to try and navigate different videos to try and find out the solution for it when you've already screwed it up on your own. Uh, this one, there is no item. We can't jump on the chain or move it at all. So this one, we won't do anything with. Um, there are, out you come. Don't get stuck behind things. There we go. Uh, there are a few of these that uh, lead to items and some do not, but they're at least worth checking out, and I would like to show as much as I can manage to show here. Uh, this battle we will cut out, though. Okay, finished off another one of those guys. Stole another Mithril Gloves from you. For some reason, it took a while, but Pearl Necklace, I believe we already had one of those as well. I believe that's all the treasure you can get uh, in this large amphitheater-like room. I'm not sure exactly what you want to call it, but... Uh, I'm also not sure how we missed this when we were here last time, but uh, as you can see over here, uh, the last of the areas that we could have gone to, uh, the chain is just hanging down, and no, you uh, can't just jump on the chain and, you know, climb down or go anywhere or anything like that. I'm holding circle button. I can do anything. Uh, do note that you can see kind of 
another platform down there. I guess that's supposed to be your indication that you can go down there, since there's a door there. Maybe. Anyway, now we are back to this one here, which should be Tower 1. And from here, we should be able to enter the next area, and I'm hoping there's a save point somewhat soon, because, yeah. It's been a while without a save point. At least we got the auto save there, so that's nice. All right, up here, we got uh, four ethers. There we go. And I know there's some other kind of tricky treasures around here. Not back there. there we go. Here we get random battles against the same enemies we saw before. You know what? Not stealing from you anymore. You're taking too long to kill that way. Though I probably need to heal, especially if you're going to target Riku. Don't target Riku. Whoa, just barely. Sometimes it does like 600 damage, I think, and sometimes it does like 100 and some damage twice. Uh, there's treasure hidden right down there. Waiting for remedies. And I need to heal. Go. And which direction do I want to go here? Um, that leads over that way. I don't think I'm going there yet. I think I'm going over here first. I think so. Yeah, you jump on that and what it does for some reason. I'm not exactly sure why any of the things under Bavel do what they do, but yeah, there's that. Not sure why we needed something to activate in order to show us that, but I don't know, it's there. Okay. So here finished off. I wasn't even watching. I literally was reading <laughs> the next direction to go in the walkthrough. Um, okay, so this is the one that I was... Was this the one I was pointing out before? I'm not sure. But anyway, here we get the Downtrotter Garment Grid, which is, I believe, the one that I was mentioning that... Uh, yeah, the one with Gravity Eater on it, after you don't need it anymore. Uh, well, I guess we still could use it. It still has its uses. I think an upcoming boss can also use that, now that I think about it. Okay, so we've done that. Now we can move over here. And I believe you're just trying to jump up the uh, either side of the pillar, and it uh, brings it down enough. Come on. Come on. There you go. And it brings it down enough that we can continue forward. Do I have to do it one more time? Okay, so there's that. So we finished off that part of it. I don't think there's anything else here. Please don't lead into a cutscene. It leads into a cutscene. This is going to be a very long episode. <laughs> Who in it? Wasn't it recorded here? Get your head out of the clouds and move it. Okay then. This area sucks. It's confusing. It's not very well laid out, and it doesn't make any There's sense. There's a connection. Everything is connected. I can feel it. I'm trying to think of a good reference for that. Everything being connected. Not coming to me. Is there a save point in this room? It'd be nice if the game would give me a save point. Because I really kind of need it. It's a very, very long episode. I know I've done longer episodes for like... Uh, 
Legend of Zelda, you know, randomizer and Donkey Kong and stuff like that. But uh, try and keep the uh, the Final Fantasy ones, uh, you know, the uh, the main LPs at a decent uh, at a decent spot. Is there a save point over here? Please tell me there's a save point over here. There is not a save point over here. That is rude. Okay, let's go talk to some people. Okay, what are you doing? Impressive. Uh, sure thing. They basically put you in this position where you're not exactly sure where you're supposed to go. Is there a save point right here? I, I know I'm not supposed to do this yet. I hope that doesn't screw up anything because I just lost my autosave and I would have to do all of that stuff over again. I really hope that doesn't screw anything up. I think it did, too. No, I don't need to see that all over again. If that screwed something up, I'm going to be really pissed. Oh. Final Fantasy X-2, why do you hate me? Why do you hate me? God, I miss save states. <laughs> we, we could have ended pretty much anywhere if I was playing with save states. Okay, over here, if you go down here, there's a thing. Yeah, you know what? I'm pretty sure I screwed something up because I'm going to end up missing out on cutscenes. Because there are cutscenes here, and I have a feeling that I'm not going to get them now. I didn't think I could go through that door. I was just going to show, oh, you can't go through that door yet. Well, I'm going to redo it anyway, because I'm not losing 0.2% just because I have to redo an hour. It's unfortunate, but uh, yeah. Anyway, that's all for this one. We're just going to end it off right here. Next time we're going to get into this room, we're not going to walk out the door that I didn't think you could walk out. And yeah, this time, or next time rather, we're not going to screw things up. That's all for this one. And I'll see you guys next time.